Do, do, do. Hello, everybody. I'm going to film this video before I go eat some Thai food with some people from church, which I'm looking forward to. I used to not like Thai food, but I'm finding slowly finding some things that I enjoy there. What's your favorite, uh, what's your favorite food? As far as American food, pizza is mine. As far as foreign food, um, spaghetti, does that count? Pasta. <laughs> Anything with carbs in it, that's what we're going to go with. Okay. We are in the middle of kind of a teaching section here from Jesus, and uh, I want to go back and just read the way he started this teaching section to give us some context, and then we're going to pick up in verses 24 through 26 today. Remember, this is kind of similar to Matthew chapter 5 in the Sermon on the Mount. So verse 20, And he lifted up his eyes on his disciples, and he said, Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who are, hu who are hungry now, for you shall be satisfied. Blessed are you who weep now, for you shall laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you and when they exclude you and revile you and spurn your name as evil on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day and leap for joy, for behold, your reward is great in heaven, for so their fathers did to the prophets. Okay, so that's how Jesus opened up, talking about blessed are those who mourn, blessed are the hungry. Now in verse 24 and 25 and 26, he's going to contrast that a little bit. So these are the verses for today. But woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. Woe to you who are full now, for you shall be hungry. Woe to you who laugh now, for you shall mourn and weep. Woe to you when all speak well of you, for so their fathers did to the false prophets. So you see the contrast between these verses and the way that he opened up. The first one were blessings. This one is more like in their condemnations, I guess, against these people. And you might say, well, Oh, wait a second. I mean, is it wrong to have a full stomach? Is that what Jesus is condemning here? He says, woe to those who are full. Woe to those who uh, laugh and are, are joyful. Is it wrong to be full of joy? Of course not. Um, nothing wrong with eating a good meal. <laughs> nothing wrong with being happy. In fact, we're, we're commanded to be happy in other places in the Bible. So what's Jesus talking about? Is it wrong to be rich? Uh, not necessarily. I think what he's doing here is he's, he's condemning those who put their trust into those things and who pursue those things with all of their might as if they um, are going to satisfy them and bring them kind of a, an eternal, lasting, perpetual satisfaction. Those who search for fullness and for joy on the earth without giving any attention to what awaits them in eternity. They are satisfied or seeking satisfaction in the immediate moment. They want to be happy. They want to be full of laughter in the immediate moment. They want to be rich in the immediate moment. But woe to the people who are into that and have no long-term vision into the future, who uh, aren't preparing themselves and aren't seeking um, provision for eternity. Those who fail to consider eternity in the present are going to be really sad that they didn't when eternity and judgment finally arrive. I think that's really what Jesus is after. It's where are your, um, where is your trust? What do you put your trust in? People who are sad and hungry, they put their trust in Christ. They're looking for something better than this world because they don't have very much. In contrast, people who are rich and satisfied and happy and full, they're often not looking any further than the immediate pleasures of life. And Jesus says, you've got to look beyond what's going on here in the world. That's why Jesus had come to the earth. <clears throat> So a point for application here is, um, you know, where are you looking for your, your joy? Maybe you think it's in like, oh, if I just had this job, I would be satisfied. If I just had this relationship, I'd be satisfied. If I just made this much money, or maybe if I was able to travel the world, or whatever. What is it for you? Is it, you think you're going to find it here on the earth? Because Jesus is saying here, you're not. You're not. <laughs> And if you listen to people who have had all the opportunities that you are believing are going to be so satisfying to you, a lot of times they say, oh no, you know, I, I thought it was going to be great here, and now I realize that there's still this hole in my soul. There's still something that needs filled, and I, I'm not sure what that is. Well, Jesus is saying here that God is the thing that is going to satisfy you and is going to uh, ensure your happiness and joy and fullness and riches into eternity. Jesus goes on. Woe to you when all speak well of you, for so their fathers did to the false prophets. 
it's human nature, I think, to want people to speak well of us. And there's not necessarily anything wrong with that. I mean, Christ, as a Christian, you certainly don't want to have a bad reputation in your community, people accusing you of crimes or screaming profanities on the side of the street, right? We don't, <laughs> it doesn't want to be the reputation that we have, uh, or we don't want that to be our reputation. And so we want to be known as good people. There's even that verse in, in Matthew 5 where Jesus says, Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. And so we want, to, we want to be, in some sense, spoken well of by other people for being upright, kind, joyful people. So Jesus here, I think what he's getting at is that in another sense, it's dangerous when everybody speaks well of you because it, it could very well be the case that they speak well of you because you compromise on the truth. Because Jesus' message is naturally offensive. You know, Jesus' message is, you're going to either come to me for grace and for salvation, or you are going to go to hell. <laughs> right? That's, that's kind of the gist of it. You're either going to die in your sins, and you're going to be in the crosshairs of God's wrath. Or you're going to do as I tell you. Now, that is not exactly the way that he communicated it, <laughs> and it's a little bit of a coarse way to communicate it. However, um, it is, I think that is faithful in some sense to the, uh, the nature of the gospel. And if we communicate that message faithfully, then there are going to be people who hate us and to speak evil of us, guaranteed. Jesus guaranteed that people would speak evil of his disciples. And the reason that that's going to happen is because people love their sins. And people do not like to be told that they are wrong by somebody else. People don't like, even when you say, look, it's not me, I'm just carrying the message of God, I just got this out of the Bible, like, don't hate me. Even when you say that to somebody, when you, when you tell them that their lifestyle is wrong or that they need to change, or that even just that they need a Savior, we as human beings like to be self-reliant. We like to think we can do it all on our own, so that we're the alpha species in the world. And, and, and being told that you need somebody to save you from yourself, only a humble person is going to be able to receive that message. And the truth is there's a lot of pride in a lot of us. And so it can be difficult. So people will hate you. People that aren't prepared to humble themselves to that level, they will hate you for telling them that, even though you're really just trying to love them by communicating the, the Jesus' message to them. Jesus knew that the majority of people were going to reject his call to repentance and to transformation, and that they wouldn't be interested in hearing him talking about the dangers of their sins. Romans talks about people loving the darkness. They like to be there. They don't like light to be shown unto their, you know, to reveal their mistakes and their um, the things that aren't quite right in their lives, the things that are deformed and out of shape and not according to God's will. You don't reveal those to me. Let me live in the darkness. Let me live in my sin. Unfortunately, though, uh, you know, this teaching of Jesus is one that a lot of people have kind of discarded for what I guess I'll refer to as like the social gospel, the social code of morality. In our world, the greatest sin to even unreligious people is offending someone. Right? Can't tell somebody that they're, that they're wrong. Can't tell somebody that their facts are mixed up. Can't even really use logic or rationality to reason with people anymore because we have this motto of like, you have your truth and I have my truth and we're just going to live our lives however we want. No one's going to judge each other and it's going to be great. Well, it's not going to be great <laughs> and the world can't operate like that. Unfortunately, a lot of people haven't figured that out yet. But to people in the world, offending someone is really the, gr the greatest sin. And they will even tell Christians that they've done wrong because they've offended somebody else. And they'll tell, I've heard this, I can't tell you how many times on some videos that I made. They will tell you that Jesus' message was love and acceptance. That's all it was. Jesus just went around loving everybody, accepting everybody in their lives, and handing out free love to, to everybody. Now, even a cursory reading of the scriptures, and if you've done the gospel studies on this channel, you'll know that there was a little bit more to Jesus' message than that, and uh, some of it's shown here, but Jesus offended a lot of people because he told them that they were in sin and that they were wrong. 
Jesus' message wasn't just love and acceptance. It was one of love and repentance. That he wanted people to be right with God. He was going to sacrifice himself and, and die for those people to allow them to get right with God. Right? But there was going to need to be some transformation in that process. And he was there to help. But lives were going to have to change. And anytime you tell somebody that their life isn't right and it needs to change, you're going to offend some people. Right? But so, so knowing that, don't let somebody convince you that just because you've offended them means that you are like a bad Christian or that you don't understand Jesus. Very well might be the case that they're just in love with their sins and you've reached out to them, loving them enough to share God's message with them, and they don't like it. Right? It's a difference between, don't let somebody say that that is intolerant or that is hateful or that is offensive. Um, that's what love looks like, according to God. So don't forget that as we, we go out into the world. Uh, the, the devil will try to mix us up on what's good and bad, what God what, wants and what he doesn't want. And look to the example of Jesus to find that out. Don't let the culture muddy up that, your, your view of seeing Jesus properly. All right, well, that's all I got for today. I'm going to go eat some spicy food and um, probably have a stomach ache after it. I always have a stomach ache after I eat at this restaurant, <laughs> but I still go back, which is definitely healthy. All right, see you guys later.